Amen. Also, want to briefly talk to you about the sick. Uh, as we talk about the sick, I'm, I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit will bring uh, different people, different situations to your heart and to your mind. Um, as I lead in prayer, uh, you guys are very free to pray yourself. You don't have to just pray in agreement with me. If there's someone that comes to your heart or to your mind, share it with your partner and pray for that person together as I lead in prayer. But I want you to pray very specifically. Because we're going to read from James 5, verse 14, 15, and 16. And I pray you're going to see this. This is what the word says. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, just as Ella was sharing in the beginning of service, where the Lord Jesus could not do many miracles because of people's unbelief, this scripture is often a little bit misinterpreted where it seems, if you want to read that into it, it seems that you could say, well, the people that pray, if they pray by faith, the person that is sick is going to be healed. We know from Jesus' life that's not the case. We know that it is those that call upon Jesus because they believed Him. Those were the ones that the Holy Spirit would move through our Lord and bring about a miracle. The same way this scripture starts off, those that are sick, let them call for the elders of the church who dwells in the believer. It's the Lord Jesus. That's why they're calling for an elder or somebody that's in authority because Christ lives in them, not because one person's prayer has more power than another person's prayer. Because Christ lives in people. If people are sick, let them call for a leader in whom Christ dwells. They're really reaching out to the Lord. Just the same as in the Word. When that faith, when they, people don't believe that Jesus wants to heal them, they don't believe that Jesus is going to heal them, they don't discern that the Lord is inviting them, that He's passing by in a way that healing is available for them. If they don't believe, they're not going to ask. And they're supposed to. That's what the Word tells us. If someone is sick, let them call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him. And yes, they anoint him in the name of the Lord, which is a form of dedication throughout the Word. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. I've told you many times, at Safe House Church, we go by the Bible. So, if you find it in the Word, you are, will do well to expect it here. If there is sickness and you desire for Pastor Russ, for me, to come and pray over you because you believe the Lord wants to heal you. We're, we're going to do that. And we'll do that in private. And we'll do that where you're comfortable. But that's what the Word invites us to do. And that's where we want to pray for those that are sick, those that are in need of healing, for them to begin to believe on the Gospel, to begin to believe on the character of the Lord, that they will begin to call and say, I believe Jesus wants to heal me. Would you pray with me? And if there's anything, the word says, confess your trespasses to one another. In other words, there are times, there are times where people are struggling with physical sickness because there are hidden sins. Does that happen? Yes, it happens. Is that concept abused and are people being guilt tripped? Yes. So, I say that very carefully, but it is the truth. When I got saved, overnight, 90% of every allergy I'd ever had was gone. Overnight, it was just gone. As, the, as everything, all of my dirt, all of my guilt was brought into the light, 
there was literally a physical experiencing kind of weight that fell off my physical body. Everything got more healthy overnight. And so there is a measure of a physical relation to hidden sin. And that's why the word says confess those sins, bring them into the light. It's, it's, it's going to make a way for healing to begin to come in. This, this scripture does not give a timeline. This scripture also doesn't give us a guarantee that the moment that somebody believes on the Lord for healing, that in that specific moment the healing will take place. The word says it will take place, but mostly the person is going to be saved. Why? That's what the word says. Because they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why they called in the first place. It's an, it's an experience, a witness to their faith. They are confessing their sins. And the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That shows us that there's times that it's not instant. The effective, fervent prayer. That means that there's times that that's a continual thing. And it avails much. It's not guaranteed in the moment. There are promises Jesus has made. You pray according to my will, it's going to be done. These are requests. It's a different form of prayer. We can request healing here and now, in time, because of who our Lord is. Because of who our Lord is, we can make those requests. We know healing is guaranteed. The timing is not guaranteed. We know that for eternity, all sickness, everyone will be healed. And God on this side of eternity also does miracles. So we generously ask for them. But we leave it up to his integrity when, how, and where he performs the miracles that bring glory to his name. And there's times that the Lord... One of my mentors shared a story with me. A very young girl family, very young, passed away. And my mentor had a very hard time understanding it. They had peace with the Lord, they were good, they just wanted to understand it so much more. And my mentor was walking through a field, there were flowers there, and they'd been going through it, and randomly the, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, pick up a flower. And just picked up a flower, and the Lord said, why did you pick that one? And he said, well, it was just the prettiest one, like, in the place where you asked me to pick up a flower. And he said, and, and that's why I brought her home. And there's going to be times that we don't understand until we let the Lord into the area of our pain and into the area of our difficulty and allow Him to teach us right there where we're hurting the most. Until He shows us his perspective on things. Sometimes these kind of scriptures, they can become confusing. What do you mean? Why do we just not have enough faith? Do we just not trust enough? And it can become a condemning experience where God seems to be distant. That's not at all what the word is saying. This is where the word says, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you call upon the body of Christ. You call together the leaders. Because when you're believing in Him, you want to pray together with people. And healing is guaranteed. The timing we leave up to God. Healing is guaranteed, but He will save the sick. That's a very, very particular word in here. He will save the sick, and the Lord will raise Him up. If He has committed sins, He will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another. Are, are you seeing this? Are you seeing that it's not because I believe God can heal me that my sins get forgiven? It's because I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ that I called upon people that knew Him. The Word says you will be saved, your sins will be forgiven, and you will be raised up. When will we all be raised up? On the last day. Amen? Amen. And then the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. We can ask fervently for healing here and now and at times we discern that that's not what the Holy Spirit is leading us to pray 
at times the Holy Spirit leads us just to pray for right there, right there, for the Lord to save the sick, for the Lord to forgive their sins, for them to, to, to come to us and pray with us because they now believe on the Lord. So I really want to pray with you for the sick, that they would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're all going to pass at one day. Amen. Amen. Or if we are around when the Lord comes, then we're exempt from that. But outside of that, we're all going to die. And death is not a problem. Amen. 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 Death is not a problem. Death has been conquered. Sickness is still around. Death we're going to experience most likely unless the Lord comes soon or we live to be nice and old. But it is our job as the church to make sure death is not a problem. So we want to pray for the sick to believe on Jesus. That's the first priority. And if they ask us to pray for healing, we want to be bold. We want to be confident and fervent. Amen. Lord, we come before